I see where he's been good to others. Praise the Lord uh, also. And we thank him and praise him for that. Um, you know, we're going to get into the scripture. I told you, I think Wednesday night I, I was preaching and got talking about uh, preaching on worship and praise and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to be preaching on today. Uh, and, and how many has ever heard somebody say, well, you know, I just don't understand why things keep on and I can't overcome a lot of things in my life. Well, sometimes, sometimes we are not exactly where we ought to be with God. And, and when, when you're not that place that where God really wants you to be, you can't overcome things, amen? But boy, if you'll get in tune with God, let me say this about the Word of God this morning. If you'll get in tune and be where God tells you to be, God will do exactly what He said He'll do. Anybody know what I'm talking about, amen? God will do exactly what He said He'll do if we'll do what we're supposed to do, amen? And so we're going to be in that. Over in James chapter number 4, uh, we're going to be there. And I'm going to read one, uh, two verses, and then we're going to back up, and I'm going to read uh, 10 verses, all right? But I'm going to read these two, and then we'll uh, get into the message, and you can be seated here shortly. In verse number 7, these are verses that's been quoted many, many times. Amen. Many folks quote them. It's been read many times, and we're going to do it again today. Bible said in verse number 7 of chapter number 4 of the book of James, y'all there, just say praise the Lord. Bible says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Let's pray. Father, God, we love you. We thank you, to God, for this day you give us. God, that we can preach the word. God, you've laid on our heart today. Thank you for the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost of God, Lord, to move and touch in this service today. Now, God, I realize, Lord, I cannot do nothing without you, Lord. I know that I cannot preach this word without you. And, Father, I don't even want to think about trying today. And thank you for the anointing of the power of God. And I pray, God, if there's one walk through these doors this morning, God, that don't know you and undone, Lord, to just that's not saved. Father, I pray, uh, uh, God, that you'd stir their heart this morning. God, draw them unto you, dear Father. I pray, God, for the child of God this morning, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, that we'd be where you'd want us to be, God. And we just thank you today for your love, your mercy, your grace. Now help us, Lord, uh, to preach this word that you've laid on our heart. We thank you. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so great to me. Amen. I say that all time. We're going to say it till I'm gone, all right? Because he has been good to me. Amen? And I praise him for that. I want to preach a message this morning. If I title the message, it be this, the power of true worship and true praise. Amen? The power of true worship and true praise. There's, there's power in what God tells us to do. Amen? In the worship. I want you to understand the difference between worship and the difference between praise this morning. Amen? If you would look uh, to think about worship, as you would think about that, uh, it's entwined with a uh, 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 submission, amen? Uh, entwined with uh, surrendering, amen? Uh, 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 rendering to God and, and, and yielding yourself to God. That's worship, amen? Getting into the place because without you getting into the place with God, you can't worship him, amen? You got to get into the place there. And worship is thanksgiving, amen? That you're giving God, I mean, praise is thanksgiving. That you're giving God praise for what he's done in in your life. Amen. Now understand when we enter these places that we realize that if we do this, then God is going to do what he said he would do. Amen. Uh, I, I think about this many times. You're reading the Bible and I wrote the scripture down and the scripture. Matter of fact, in Psalms chapter number eight and verse number two, uh, he says this. He said, out of the mouth of babes uh, it said, and sucklings, it said, has he ordained strength because of thine enemy, enemies. It says that thy Almighty, steal the enemy uh, and the uh, uh, avengers. Amen. In other words, steal them means quieten them. Amen. Silence them. Amen. That's why I told a little bit Wednesday night about uh, what praise does. So Y'all realize praise silences the devil. Amen. Let me say that to you. Uh, not only does it silence the devil, but praise confuses the devil. Amen. Uh, true praise confuses the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. But let me say this. Uh, uh, false praise confuses the church. 
church. If you ain't under, if you understand what I'm saying tonight, we've got to do it all. But we was in the in, in Corinthians this morning, Sunday school, and decent in order, and, and it's be done right. Amen. Uh, so understanding these these verses that God's give us, and I want us to enter into the praise where that we're going to see in the Bible in the book of James tonight. This is where we can get to, but we got to get to the place to where our praise uh, it takes us to where we ought to be with God. Amen. Uh, to see that back up now in James chapter number four, I want to look in verse number one. Amen. And we're going to get through these verses and I've got a whole lot of scripture wrote down and we'll get there if we can. All right. In verse number one, the Bible says this. It says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? It says, come ye not. It says, come, it says, uh, uh, come they uh, not hence, even uh, for the uh, your lust which warth in your members. And it's James talking. He's talking about coveting. A lot of this is about coveting, my friend. If we uh, coveted what others has got, you ain't got to only. You ain't got to look at things and covet them. Look over there and see what your brother's got over there and say, well, uh, I, I, he's got. I wish I had what he's got. A, a big home. But some people even cover it, cover it people's walk with God. Amen. Uh, I'm talking about tonight like this one's walking somewhere and close to God. Let me say this to you. They paid a price to get where they are. Amen. Uh, walking with God, my friend, there's a price to pay for that. Hallelujah. And you say, oh, what do you mean by that? You say, uh, preacher, there's some people that's just closer to God than others. It's their choice. They choose to, to get to that place. You can be just as close as they are. All you got to do is seek the Lord. We're going to see that in the scripture here in just a minute. But look here what he says here in the scripture. He said in verse number two, he said, You lust and you have not. You kill and you desire to have and you cannot obtain. Amen. You fight and you war, yet you have not because you ask not. Hallelujah. Uh, now he's talking about this. We need to ask God in the right way, sincerity way, and God's going to bless. Amen. Uh, to get us to a place to where we can praise the Lord. That's what I want to uh, preach on tonight. Uh, praising the Lord and getting to the place to where we can put the enemy to silence. Now listen, I, I told Wednesday tonight, everything that ever happens to us, the enemy ain't, ain't always the enemy's fault. Sometimes it's our fault. Amen. But I believe once we get to a place that God wants us to get to, that God will bless us and he'll send, uh, he'll send the enemy on the flight. Amen. And we're going to get on into the scripture. The Bible says here in verse number three, it said, you asked and you received not because you asked the myth. It says that you may uh, uh, consume it unto your lust. Now, what we're lusting after, your adulterers and adulteress. He said, know ye uh, not that the friendship of this world is an enemy with God. It said, uh, uh, whosoever, uh, therefore, will be a friend to this world is an enemy to God. Amen. Uh, church, again, I'm trying to get you to the place of worship. Listen, do we not know that everybody wants to get to that place to where everything's hunkered over and everything goes? good, but they don't want to fight. To, they don't want to do what it takes to get there. Amen. Uh, everybody wants to come in and have an awesome service and, and you don't want the devil to flee from you and leave you alone, but we don't want to do what it takes to get there to so he will. Amen. And what does it take, preacher? We've got to get to the place. We've got to uh, submit ourselves and that's what we're getting to in the Word. It's what uh, Paul, it's what James said right here in verse number 5. The Bible said, do you think that the scripture uh, which uh, it, it saith in Vain, the, the spirit that dwelleth in us lust, lust is envy. In other words, what he said there, he said, don't you know we have a spirit in us, that old fleshly part that lusts envy and, and, and seek us after other things that we ought not seeking after, doing things, seeking whatever ever somebody else has or, or whatever they doing. Uh, my friend, that hinders our walk with God. Amen. But I'm coming to tell you we can get beyond that because I want to get into that place um, to where worship brings God's presence. And I'm going to show you uh, that in the scripture uh, today. I just got a lot of groundwork to lay right here to get there. Then he goes on and says in verse number six, it said, but he, uh, but he giveth more grace. Thank God for that. Amen. That he giveth more grace. It said, wherefore, he saith, God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Amen. And now verse number seven again, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Now there's a period right there. Amen. Uh, everybody likes to get to that part. 
where it said, resist the devil and he'll free from you. But until you uh, uh, submit yourself to God, it ain't going to happen. Amen. Uh, we've got to submit ourselves unto God. Hallelujah. I want the presence of God to be in my life. I want the devil to flee from me. I, I want to resist him and he will flee. I, but we got to get to the place to where that's sad. I, I want to get to the place. I wrote a, 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 a verse down here in Psalms 91. Anybody ever read the 91 Psalm? Amen. I, I'm just going to read the first two verses. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Amen. I, I don't know about y'all, but that's where I want to go. That's where I want to abide. You know what's going to get me there? When I submit myself unto God. Amen. And when I submit myself unto God I, and get what I need to have in my life, hallelujah, then I can worship God like I'm supposed to. I, I can call on God like I ought to, I, but I can praise Him like I want to I, 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 because everything lines up like it's supposed to. Amen. I, I want you to understand that in the Scripture uh, this morning. So understand, submit ourselves, therefore, un, uh, uh, therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. And verse number 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Amen. And verse number 9, look at this. At this. Um, see, everybody thinks that uh, uh, when you uh, all you got to do is just, just continue on what you're doing, you'll be fine. That ain't what the Bible says. Um, uh, if we look at this, this is also in a repentance way way to where we can get in tune where God wants us to be. Amen. He says in verse number nine, he said, uh, be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. I, in other words, what God's saying, on our wrongness, there'll be a remorse into that. Amen. On things that we're doing wrong and things that's not right, we're going to remorse over that. We're going to what we're so happy and joyful about that's not right. We're going to turn them to mourning and we're not going to have the joy that we want to because we turn it over to God and we say, God, I'm sorry because, God, I want to get to a place where I can worship you. I want to get to a place where I can praise you. And then I know when all this takes place, the devil will flee from me. Amen. I have to understand that. And then he goes on as we look in verse number 10. Look what he says. Humble yourself in the sight of God, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Hallelujah. That's the part I like to get to where God lifts me up. But before he can lift me up, I got to do all the rest of it. I got to submit myself. Amen. I, I got to draw close to the Lord. I, I got to do all these things to where I can get to the place of worship and get to what God would have me to do. Amen. I, I want you to look. It, it's notice in this also as we uh, look and in all, also as uh, I praise silence the enemy. Um, but look at this. Um, a true praise also puts our focus in the right place. Um, I'm going to read what this says um, in Psalm chapter uh, 121 verse 1 and 2 uh, it said I lift up my eyes unto the hills uh, for whence my help come uh, my help coming from the Lord which uh, which made heaven and earth uh, in other words my friend listen when we put our eyes on the Lord uh, and we realize that's where our help comes from uh, and we realize that's what it is uh, and we get our focus in the right place uh, then as we praise him we worship him and then the God can uh, uh, drive the devil out sight and he, uh, silence him and make us who and what we need to be. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I want you to know there's importance about praise. There's importance about worship. And church, if we'll never go nowhere if we don't praise the Lord. But to praise God in the right way, you got to be in the right place. Understand what I'm saying to you today. There's one thing to praise the Lord. There's one thing to worship. But the Bible even told a woman at the well, anybody remember her? And when Jesus comes, sit on the well. And he come there, and as he was sitting there, the woman come, and he asked her for a drink, and they had a conversation, and she told him, she said, we worship up on the mound. You know what Jesus told her? He said, you worship, you know not what. I'm telling you, see, there's a difference. When we come to know what we worship, then we can worship the Almighty God. And then as we worship him, it brings a praise, and our praise, a silence the enemies, and gets us into the place under the wings of the shadows of the Most High God into the place that I want to be in the place that God wants us to be. A church, God loves us and God cares for us. But we got to do what God says for God's protection to be upon us. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. As we understand these things and we look in the Scripture, there was also people that did not do what was right. If you'll look over back in the book of Exodus, chapter number 32, y'all remember when Moses went up on the mount for 40 days? Y'all remember that? Uh, to get the, uh, the law. Amen. And the Bible said why he was up there, hey, God looked off down there in the, in, in the bottom of the mountain, and there Aaron was, and all them was doing things they weren't supposed to do. It's a children of Israel done got to want to worship something and they couldn't see it and so guess what they done and the Bible said in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 3 the Bible said, and all the people uh, broke off the golden rings and uh, uh, which wore uh, in the earring in the ears and brought them to Aaron. And, and verse number four said that he did uh, receive them and at uh, the hand and, and fashioned it with graven uh, uh, with graven tools. Uh, and after he had made it a grave a, go, uh, a, a, a molten calf, uh, it said, and they said, uh, these be uh, listen, these be the gods uh, instead of Israel, which has brought us up out of the land of Egypt. My friend, there was only one God brought them out of that land. They was worshiping, but they worshiped they know not what. They was worshiped golden images and all that. And what happened to that? In verse number 7, if you look on into that chapter, in verse number 7 the Bible said, and the Lord said unto Moses, Moses go and get thee down for the people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. My friend, if we ain't careful, we worship and we know not what. And we'll corrupt ourselves. And not only will we corrupt ourselves, we'll even corrupt the church. Understand what I'm talking about tonight. I'm this morning, but listen to me. I want to get to the place to where God is the God and we worship because we know what we worship and we know what we praise. And when we do that, God's presence comes down upon us. Hallelujah. I'm going, to speak, I'm going to tell you what, how you know that and, and what the Word says, amen, in, in the Scripture. As we understand this, uh, the, the praise in the presence in Psalms 22 and verse number 3 said, But thou, O holy, thou art holy. And, oh, uh, it said, thou, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. In other words, he inhabits the praise of his children today. When he talks about Israel, he's talking about us. I, I'm, I'm because we've been adopted into the vine. Ain't you glad of that today? Uh, praise the Lord. I'm so thankful uh, for that now. So understand that to get into the place of worship and to get into the place of, of praise tonight, uh, this morning, that we know that when we do that, we're under the protection of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Praise the Lord. You can say, you can say hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. So I want to read some more scripture to you over in Isaiah chapter number 61. If you'll look there in chapter number one, if you'll look, you can read these with me if you want to. Uh, this is what he's talking about now. I believe this was Jesus, and I'll tell you why I believe it was Jesus in, in just a minute. The Bible said here in verse number one of six of chapter one of sixty chapter sixty-one of verse one, it said the spirit of the Lord uh uh, uh, it said, and the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings, it said, unto the meat. It said, it has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. It says, to proclaim liberty to the captive and to open the prisons to them that are bound. <laughs> Boy, I fit all, I fit that category. Anybody in the house <laughs> fit that category? Amen. But look what it says right here. Now, understanding this is why it's important for me and you to have worship and praise in our lives. Because without worship and praise, my friend, I want you to know the enemy's present and that he's always present. And my friend, me and you don't have no power. We don't have ourselves have no power over him. But I come to tell you one that lives inside me that does, <laughs> and that can put him on the flight. Amen. I'm, I'm Look what he says right here in verse number two. It says to proclaim a acceptable year of the Lord. It said, and the day of vengeance of our God. Amen. It says to comfort all those that mourn for all the, that mourn. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Amen. It says to give unto them beauty for ashes. Amen. Boy, now if you'll go back and you'll study that out, y'all remember where they, uh, you remember Job. The Bible said when Job got in a mess and everything fell upon him, he took his seven, put him in sackcloth and they were going ashes. 
and that wasn't pretty. Amen. I, uh, but I come to tell you, God said he would trade that out, beauty for the ashes. Amen. I, uh, boy, I come to tell you, in times of our grief, uh, in times of our sorrow, in times of our mess ups, uh, uh, because we had a true worship and we worship God Almighty. We praise the one Almighty. Uh, uh, boy, he comes down upon us. Uh, and boy, he set us free. Uh, he's delivered us. Uh, he they understand what he's saying right here. Uh, my friend, he's give us beauty for ashes. Uh, and the Bible said the oil of joy for mourning. Amen. Uh, and look what it said here. The garment of praise uh, uh, for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, it says they uh, that uh, it says that they might be called uh, trees of righteousness, uh, the plants, uh, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. That's what God wants from me and you today uh, is to glorify the Lord. Uh, uh, and the reason I tell you about that verse, I believe he's talking about Jesus right there, because over in the chapter of the book of Luke, uh, in the book of book, uh, over in the book of Luke, chapter number four, in verses 17 to 21, you'll find over there them talking to the, the uh, disciples and talking to them over there in the synagogues, and he brung, brings in the book um, and opens the book of Isaiah and reads that, and he looks at them and tells them, he said, this day it's been the scripture has been fulfilled um, in that. Amen. I, I tell you, I'm glad I'm adopted in the vine. I'm, and church, I'm telling you, I'm, if, we would, if we would walk around, I'm, if we would worship God I, in spirit and in truth like we ought to, I, I'm telling you these things would take place for me and you. I, but we got to call on God. I, we got to honor God. I, you got to believe in God. I, I thank God that we'll call and we'll worship his name, church. I, I'm telling you, he said in that scripture, he would give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Are you listen to that? Do you understand me? Listen to me. He didn't want to leave us naked because if he left you naked, my friend, the devil will close you with anything. He'd put anything on you. But I tell you, he said, I'll give you a garment of praise. And church, that garment of praise is for me and you, children of God, to praise the Lord. I tell you, I say we ought to praise the Lord. In Psalm chapter number 50, in 13 times, he said we ought to praise you the Lord. We ought to praise you the Lord. A church, we got to praise God. It's not me. It's not you. You ain't got what you got because of yourself. You didn't do it by your lonesome. You've done it because God has I give you a power and authority to do what you're doing. Can somebody just praise the Lord? I'm going to tell you tonight. This morning when we shut the praise down, when we shut the praise up, you might have to shut the doors up. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, when we get to the place to where we don't praise him, we don't worship an almighty God, we might shut the doors. Because I'm going to tell you right now, matter of fact, let me tell you what the, what the word says. The word says he demands us to praise the Lord. The Bible said in Psalms 113, verse number 3, he said, for the, he said, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Are you hearing me? Hey, I feel like today you are just praise the Lord. You say, preacher, I just ain't where I can. Well, you need to get there. Amen. If you need to come on to the altar and get things right, well, you can praise the Lord. Listen, get into the place. Submit yourself unto the Lord. Draw nigh unto the Lord. He'll draw nigh unto you. Get everything worked out. Because I'm going to go on and tell you, God has been good to you. I said, God has blessed you. I don't care where you want or where you're hundred. I don't care who you are. You have been blessed. I said, you have been blessed. And the Bible said what blessings are. How do we give a praise? It's through the thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm telling you, we need to give God praise and things. If you ever come in here and you don't give God praise, if you go home and you don't give God praise, my house, 
I praise the Lord. My car, I praise the Lord. My truck going down the road, I praise the Lord. Because I come to tell you, every breath you draw, every, every time you breathe, every time you talk, every time you walk, you got something to praise God for. Hey, God said, God give you the bread. God give you what you got. You want to praise him. You want to call on his name. The Bible said he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise the Lord. This old preacher right here is going to praise the Lord until they put him under. And I believe the dirt will kick up where I be want to praise him. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. We got to praise him. You got to get to the place to praise him. See, it's, it's hard to get to the place. So, see, we had to get through all these scripture to get to the place to praise him. You got to get in your life to scripture and line up with the scripture so you can get to the place to praise him. Are you hearing me? Oh, you can't just come in here, lost sinners, and sit down and praise the Lord because you don't know what you're praising. You don't know who you worship. You don't know. But when you get to the place, when you draw nigh to God, when you submit yourself, I see people don't like to hear stuff like that. They just talk about praise. And, and then, boy, we get the benefits of praise. I come to tell you, you can't get the benefits until you know the ones that give the benefits. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Boy, I'm telling you, God's been good to me. It's time, church, for we know the goodness of the Lord. I know the Lord's just. I know he's just. I know that he's real. I know he's a just God. I know he don't like sin. I know that. And I thank God that he don't. But I thank him for what he's done in my life. I thank him for where he's brought me from. I thank him that I'm still able to shout and give him glory in the place. See, we got to praise him. We have no choice but to praise him. This is a commandment of the Lord that you praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you don't like praise, my friend, I'm telling you right now, you're lost. If you don't like praise, you're lost. I read some uh, some commentary, and I don't read much of that, but every once in a while I will read a little. And they said some people don't uh, come in. They some churches that don't uh, that, that praise the Lord, but don't speak and, and don't even have emotion. I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know how you can ball something like it up as good as God's been to you. And you can't just say praise him. You can't give him glory because what God's done, he very gives you everything. Look at your children beside you. If you ain't got them with you, look, they somewhere. You ought to be thankful for that. How God's blessed your family. How God's kept you from starvation. How God's kept you alive. How you ain't in the hospital today. How you ain't in your home today. You got something to praise him for. But you got to praise him. You got to praise him, church. When you realize the author of this book and you realize that he is the Almighty, and you ain't got no choice. You ain't got no choice. Boy, God's just been too good. The Bible says this again. I'm going to read this. In, 30, in Psalms 35, 18, it says, I will give thee thanks. In the great congregation. Hallelujah. In the great congregation. And I will praise thee among much people. In other words, my friend, don't be ashamed to praise the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Listen to me. You somewhere and somebody, you talk about the goodness of God. Do you not know? Listen to me. Somebody told me I've got God's goodness. I, I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I know God's just. I know God don't like sin. I know he hates it. But I'm going to tell you, when I got saved, there was somebody, there was an old preacher right back up here talking about the goodness of God, talking about how good God was. All I'd have to do is turn and repent my sins and lay them down and God come along and pick me up and the Bible said he'd put my foot on a solid rock and boy I heard about all that and I knowed where I lived. I knowed what was going on in my life. I knowed on the road I was headed to hell. I didn't need him beat me over the head telling me I was headed to hell. You just going to hell. I know I'm going to hell but what can I do about it? Hey Jesus loves you and there's a way out. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm 
saying, hey, Jesus loves you this morning. He loves you. He loves you. Praise the Lord. I'm just being honest with you. God loves you. Now let me say this. That's why James didn't call, he didn't call none of it. He said, oh, you sinners. He said, cleanse your heart. Oh, you sinners, listen to me. You can't come to Jesus and you can't get saved without him cleaning your heart. He can't do it. But when he does all that and he, he does everything for us, then it comes a time that you realize where you was and where you are. I'm going to tell you, I know where I was. Any sinner in the house know where you was? Come on, one of you should. I know where I was. I was on death row. That's where I was. Let me go and preach that for a few minutes. I was saying old song said mercy walked in. I was on death row. Hallelujah. I was already destined to a hell. And I'm telling you because I deserved it. And I was headed there. And I'm telling you. And the old enemy had me bound up. That's why you better go back and read in Isaiah 61. Because he come rescued me. He come to the broken hearted. He come to the ones in prison, bound down, and he come and loosen us and let us go and give us a garment of praise for the, for the heaviness that we carry. Hallelujah. <laughs> sitting on death row, where I was sitting there, didn't think I had no hope within me, I didn't. <laughs> I'll never forget, I can take you to the place where I got off the pew that night. Matter of fact, the old church still stands there today. Sitting long about over here, and I preach this all the time, but you know what? I'm going to preach it till I'm dead. Amen? Because you know what? It's good for you, and it's good for the devil to know I remember. Hallelujah! It's good for the devil to know. That's why I told these kids not long ago, you just hang on. You remember. You may not, I may not remember the very date it was. I may not tell you it was on uh, January the 9th of 1981. I can't tell you that. But I can take you back to the place of that day. I was a young man. I was sitting on that pew. And I felt the Holy Ghost pulling my heart. Hey, and I got up from there. I was sitting down there on death's row. And and mercy walked in. Hallelujah. He walked in. in the back, and I was guilty. I was very guilty of the very thing that I was accused of. But thank God when mercy walked in, hey, he said, hey, loosen him and let him go. Mercy called me off a of death row. I got up, walked down that aisle like I was something else. And I was. I was a saved child of God, born again. A sinner that had come out of hell and God had saved me turned me around you tell me I got something to praise God for glory hallelujah boy you better praise him you better praise him you better praise him you know what you know what I hear of uh, uh, people today to say the el I'm talking about really elderly people you know preacher if I was able I'd sure enough just praise the Lord. Well, let me say this, you younger folk. You got an opportunity. You ought to give it all you got. It's sad we'll go to a ball game. We'll get up in a ball game, and son, I'm telling you, they our favorite team, Georgia, can kick that. I mean, get that uh, touchdown down through yonder. I'm telling you, our living room become a bouncing house. <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Go! I'm just being. I'm, I, I'm with you. Hey, I'm, I'm sat on the edge of the chair too. I, I sat there, but I come to tell you, I don't let it take the place of the worship of an Almighty God. I, I worship Him first and foremost. Hey, I come to tell you, I come in here this morning and tell you, God save me. God has been good to me. God's blessed my house. We got to eat last night. Hallelujah! I'm going to get to eat today. Hey, I got to tell you, I got gas in my tank. I was able to drive the church. I was able to afford a vehicle to get over here. You got something to praise the Lord for. You better praise him. You better praise him. God loves the, God loves the inhabitant of his people to praise his name. Listen to me. He goes over in one in, in Psalms 100, verse chapter number four. In chapter 100, verse number four. 
He says this. He said, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. I said, that's in chapter 22. That's 22 verse 3. The other verse I just quoted you, it said, enter unto his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Enter his gates. Let me say this. Not only in the church house, but in his presence. In his presence with thanksgiving. Church, do you really want to praise and do you really want to see God move in a church? In a service? Do you want to see God move in your home? Enter those praise. Enter those presents with thanksgiving. Amen? Listen to what he said. As he wrote this, and he said, Enter the gates with thanksgiving, and unto his courts with praise. Hallelujah. He said, Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Boy, that verse right there, preach all by itself. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful today. Let me say this to you, and I'm going to go back to that garment again that we put on, that God has put on us. When he saves us, God gives us his. He takes that off. I'm going to read that verse to you again, but you need to understand that. The Bible says this again. It says, to appoint unto them the mourn, uh, that, uh, that mourn, in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and oil for joy. The oil means the anointing of God. That's what oil stands for, church. Let me say this to you. Salvation is free, and I'll preach that all my many, many years. Salvation is free gift that God give. But I'm going to tell you something. The anointing of God is going to cost you a little bit. It's going to cost you some separation. <laughs> It's going to cost you some pushing back. It's going to cost you some time to work. As it's, it's James said, uh, he says, submit yourself, amen, unto the Lord. It's going to cost you some of that where he says, draw nigh unto me. Are you understanding? It's going to, listen, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with the things we do, but when we let the things we do get in a place of what we're supposed to do, it becomes wrong in our lives. And when we do that, it separates us from God. And when it separates us from God, listen to me, it don't, the, the anointing of God, then it ain't it strong on your life. That's what I was talking about a while ago when others look at somebody else and say, boy, I want what they got. I see the anointing on their life. I see the power of God on their life. And I want it. Well, if you want it, why don't you walk where you are to walk to get it? Hallelujah. You can get the same way as they got it. All you got to do is spend time with God, tarry before God, call upon the Lord, and God will bless you. And boy, God will do the rest of it for you. Look what he said right here in the scripture. He said there, he said, and, and, and joy and all for the joy of the morning and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I come to tell you I choose to put on that garment of praise because I want you to know the enemy, our adversary, as a roaring lion walketh and seeketh who he may devour. That word coming out, he didn't say who he was going to devour. He said who he may devour because why? Because if that garment of praise is on you, I'm telling you, he cannot. I said he cannot. It's very important that you keep that garment of praise on. It's very important. I don't care you got up this morning and you don't feel good. And it just, don't, it just ain't a good day. i tell you what it is a good day. It's a good day to praise the Lord. It's a good day to give God some glory. Because your adversary has a roaring lion walking and seeking whom he may devour. I got news to tell him that day ain't your day, brother. Hallelujah. The day's the day the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, y'all. Y'all can praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. I done lost my initiative. Amen. I, I know I ain't. I got it in my pocket. Hallelujah. But let me tell you this. He's worthy to be praised. Listen to me. When I choose to put that garment, I don't know what time it is. I ain't really worried about it. I come to tell you, I want you to get to the place where you walk around with a garment on. Because I come to tell you, he get an enemy can mess your day up if you allow him. That's why he cut God. God closed us. He traded that. He traded that that garment of heaviness for the garment of praise. Ain't you glad? Ain't you glad? I want to praise Him. 
I want to honor him. I believe when he wrote this 61 song, uh, 61 chapter in the book of Isaiah, he looked way down the road and he saw Jody. He looked way down the road and he saw all of us in this place. Amen? You say, preacher, that was for Israel. Yeah, but let me tell you what Israel done. They messed up. They rejected him, and you know what he done? He said, go get those that want me. Amen? And he went and got He turned to the Gentile, and hey, here we are. I'm saved by the grace of God and through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to praise and worship him for what he does for us. Listen, I'm going I'm to close shortly. But he goes on in that verse, and he says that, the, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planted of the Lord. Listen, in other words, when he said planted of the Lord, we don't get tossed to and fro. We're planted of the Lord. It says that he might be glorified. Ain't you glad? Ain't you glad? Look here. I'm closing back out with this verse that I started with. One of the verses I started with in Psalms 91. See, when we get to the place where we praise him, we get to that place to where we just call upon his name, it really means something. The Bible said here again in Psalms 91 verse 1, it said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Amen. I'm here. I, I can, boy, I got a big old, I got a big imagination. I can just see God sitting there with his big old. Uh, I, I'm telling you, I don't. I, you know, just just knowing that, that you can just get into the. Pre- Y'all remember when Peter was out there uh, preaching and, and and folks were getting healed? The Bible said if they could get into the shadow of, the, of Peter, it wasn't Peter. It was what Peter carried. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It was what God gave Peter and what was inside Peter because God put it there. But I tell you what, we can do. We can enter in. And we can go into the place to where Peter went. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? Into the wings of the shadows of the Most High. Listen here. He said here again. He said, I, he, said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the, of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that's what praise will do. That's what worship will do. It'll put you in that place. People around you, you can look at them going left or right. Those unsaved people, even some that say that's miserable. Do y'all know they some saved miserable people because they hadn't submitted. They hadn't drew nigh. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? Do you know when James wrote that? He was talking to Christian folk. He was telling them as a Christian people, this is what your problem is. This is why you can't flee. The devil won't flee from you. This is why he's always holding you because you won't submit yourself. You won't draw nigh to the Lord. But if you will do this, God will do this. I'm glad I'm trying my best to do this. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, my God will do that. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. It's the word of God. And boy, I like to do it so I can get under the wing of the shadows of the Almighty. Amen. And he says, when I get there, this is us. This is our praise. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, somebody. He is my refuge. (laughs) He's where I run to. Hey, he's my, the Bible even talks about over in Samuel. He said, he's my high tower. He's my refuge. He said, he's my fortress. Are you here what I'm telling you? He's a place I go. Listen to what he said. He said here, he said, he is my refuge and my fortress. And he said, my God, that's who he is. Come on, somebody. I don't know. Hey, I tell you what. He was in kings over there. It didn't know what to do. He said, we don't know what to do. But one thing we know is our eyes are on you. I come to tell you sometimes you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. Hey, just come under the wings of the shadows of the Almighty. Hey, he said, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. Hallelujah. Do I got anybody in the house that would say he's my God? <laughs> he's my God. Hallelujah. He's my God. Hey, and then he climbed it out with this. He said, in him will I trust. In him will I trust. Listen to me. I don't know what the day is going to hold for me. I don't know what the day is going to hold for you. 
I don't know if Jesus is coming back today or not. But I can tell you all, until it does, or the time my time comes to go, he's my refuge. <laughs> he's my fortress. He's my, he's my God. Hallelujah. And in him will I trust. <laughs> I'll not turn to another. I'll not worship another. I'm not worshiping a golden calf. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worshiping anything else. <laughs> I'm worshiping the one that's been proven. And that's the one almighty. He saved me. He brought me out. He's kept me. And you know what? He's still doing it today. Brother Thomas, Tranny, y'all come, brother. Y'all will. Listen, church.